This video is brought to you by Crosstalk, the brand for those who are crazy enough to devote everything to lacrosse. Check them out using the link in the description down below. So now that school has started up and our men's lacrosse program is back to practicing, it's given me a lot of time to reflect about myself, lacrosse, and the sport's role within society. This sport has given so many opportunities to me that as a young kid I never thought would be possible, and as such a strong advocate for a game I love so much, I thought it'd be a great opportunity to take some time and talk about what makes this sport great and why I personally think it has such a bright future ahead of it. So some of you may already know, but lacrosse is the oldest sport in North America, originating from the Haudenosaunee people or the modern day people of the Iroquois Six Nations. De Honchiguayas, meaning they bump hips in the Onondaga language, or De Waradon, meaning little brother of war in the Mohawk language, are just some of the few names that the sport of lacrosse has been called, with the name lacrosse being given by French missionaries who thought that the sticks resembled the crosiers used by bishops, thus beginning a long separation of the sport from its actual roots. I've seen many moments in this sport that I found extremely beautiful, but none haunt me as much as this image of Zed Williams kissing his stick after becoming only the fourth non-white player to win a league MVP in the 28 years of professional lacrosse. His Iroquois Six Nations teammate, Lau Thompson, describes this moment perfectly, stating, I hope people understand why Zed is holding his stick through the ceremony. He could care less about the trophy. It was never about that. He understands the spiritual dimension of lacrosse. He personifies his stick. It treated him good today, and he appreciates it for that. This concept that our lacrosse stick is an extension of us with the earth and beyond, that it's a conduit for a better life, and that it's an extension of our own will and being, is an extremely profound concept that I don't think is found in a lot of other sports. Come to think of it, the only other example I can think of in any other sport is when Tsubasa proudly declares, Boru wa tomodachi, or in other words, the ball is my friend. Once again, sharing this profound appreciation for this extension of your own individuality. Furthermore, I can't talk about individuality and lacrosse without discussing one of the most vital and beautiful parts of the game, how your stick is strung. As a player, the type of pockets, materials, and stringing patterns that are used are unique to you and you alone. Everyone has their own way of playing lacrosse, with different ways of throwing the ball, carrying the ball, shooting the ball. And the way their stick is strung helps represent this sense of individuality. Two players can have the same stick and stringing, but they will never be the same player. One player will inevitably snap their wrists or move their hips differently, breaking in the stick just a little differently than the other player, as their own uniqueness will rub off onto their own stick. And just as players are important to this game, so are the stick makers and stringers. Alfred Jacques, an important figure in the Onondaga lacrosse community, has been in producing sticks for nearly half a century, infusing his lifeblood, his passion for the sport, and his family heritage into every single wooden stick he produces. Yoshitaka Ando, a Japanese national who had never even seen lacrosse before becoming the athletic trainer of Lincoln Sudbury, proceeded to become the trainer and the stick doctor for both the Japanese national team and LS, helping to educate and cultivate young players such as Redwoods Lacrosse Club long stick midfielder John Sexton on what it means to be a professional as he strung numerous traditional style pockets for Sexton. Lars Kiel is widely considered to be one of the most revolutionary stringers in the world as he helps to pave the way for the lacrosse community. His knowledge of lacrosse, stringing techniques, and patterns remain unrivaled as he creates some of the highest quality products for players across America. Lastly, we have Masuya Matsuda, or Kewa Strings, Japan's current stick doctor, who strings hundreds of sticks for all players across Japan. Matsuda is one of the most dedicated stringers in the lacrosse community, often producing tutorials and pro player replicas for the next generation of lacrosse players and stringers in Japan to take inspiration from. This uniqueness and ability to create provides lacrosse an extremely beautiful art form that to this day is unparalleled with any other sport. The final aspect of this sport that I find so beautiful is the free-flowing creativity that one can have when playing lacrosse. There are at least 30 different ways I can think of to pass or shoot the ball, allowing players to have total creative agency over the way they play this game. Anyone with any size or athletic ability can come into the sport, and with enough work ethic and stick skills, they can instantly become game changers. There are numerous styles of play that can bring you success. 
You can be short, tall, stocky, skinny, flashy, or reserved. You can still find a spot on the field so long as you work hard. This creativity and encouragement to break new ground as an athlete is especially important as we look to grow this sport in America and abroad. And this combination of athleticism, skill, and creativity is what makes the sport of lacrosse truly so beautiful to watch. If you have seen lacrosse before in popular media, odds are you have seen the stereotypical lax bro, the player with long flowing hair, graphic shorts, and extremely lackadaisical nature. There's been a strong effort to move away from the lax bro stereotype, as it extremely stigmatizes lacrosse players and doesn't accurately depict the numerous players that play this sport. This is just one of many stereotypes with regards to lacrosse, and while this one isn't necessarily harmful, some of them are. Lacrosse, despite its rich history, is considered a sport for wealthy, upper-class Caucasian males, and it doesn't really provide a lot of access for POC or people of lower income classes. This stereotype, while generally true, has been something that has aided in damaging the reputation of the lacrosse community. Many headlines and narratives created regarding the sport in the past 20 years haven't been exactly positive, with many emphasizing the player's race, class, sex, and social status as it relates to society to pin even more negative light on the sport. And while there are some bad apples in the sport, it shouldn't be what defines us. I feel some genuinely amazing people have come out and played this sport and have been a part of the lacrosse community for years. Jerry Greenfield, the co-founder of Ben & Jerry's. Yes, the ice cream brand that said they would not shut up and stick to food when questioned about their political activism, played lacrosse at Oberlin College. You also have people like Bill Belichick and Steve Nash who have played the game and are huge advocates for it highlighting just how large the lacrosse community really is. Over the past decade, a lot of effort has been put in to promote diversity within the sport of lacrosse. In 2012, the NCAA Demographic Survey showed that 88% of the roughly 10,000 college men's lacrosse players were white. In 2020, that percentage had decreased to show that 83% of more than 15,000 college men's lacrosse players were white. This growth of the sport can be attributed to many factors. One being that programs such as Harm Lacrosse have helped to promote diversity within the sport by providing the opportunity for POC to play and fall in love with lacrosse as well as to help fulfill their academic potential through various academic programs and tutoring. Another factor that has led to the sport of lacrosse increasing in its participation and diversity is the act of pro lacrosse championing its heritage and promoting diversity. The newly formed PLL has done an excellent job of highlighting those that elevated the level of the sport regardless of their ethnic, racial, or socioeconomic background. The Jim Brown PLL MVP award is named after Jim Brown. <laughs> yes. That Jim Brown. He's considered to be the greatest lacrosse player of all time. A physical beast with immense technical ability and IQ, Jim Brown was elected into the Lacrosse Hall of Fame and continues to serve as a huge advocate for the sport. Kyle Harrison is one of the greatest midfielders the sport of lacrosse has ever seen. Not only did he revolutionize what it meant to be a full-time professional lacrosse player, but he also made great strides in promoting diversity and inclusion within the sport of lacrosse. The two-time professional champion and member of Team USA is one of the lead organizers for the PLL Assist program, which is designed to help inspire inclusiveness and bring awareness to marginalized members of society. Harrison has also been an advocate for creating conversation about social inequalities, educating, and making the game of lacrosse more diverse. Joe Walters, considered to be one of the best lacrosse players of the 21st century, is of Vietnamese descent and is the first Asian American to ever be picked with a number one overall pick in any of the American professional sports leagues. A two-time professional lacrosse champion and a gold medal winner with Team USA, Joe Walters has become player beloved by many in the lacrosse community and has been an inspiration to the AAPI community. Lyle Thompson is of Onondaga descent and plays for the Cannons Lacrosse Club as well as the Iroquois Six Nations. He is widely regarded as one of the greatest lacrosse players to play lacrosse, and he has changed the game with his immense creativity and skill. He won the Dewa Award in 2014 and 2015, two professional championships and two professional MVP awards. He has been a strong advocate for indigenous people's representation within athletics, as well as many issues outside of the sport. There are many more athletes of color that have revolutionized the game and have inspired many people to play lacrosse. You have Trevor Baptiste, one of the greatest face-off midfielders of all time, 
Miles Jones, physically the most dominant player to touch a lacrosse stick, and is a 6 foot 5 monster who has added enough personality to the sport to go around. You have Dane Smith, the first black MVP in professional lacrosse, as well as his partner in crime, Josh Byrne, a walking highlight reel. You have Romar Dennis, Jules Henningberg, Jared Newman, the list goes on and on. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention Kaisuke Iwamoto. A professional lacrosse champion, and the first Japanese lacrosse player to play in a professional lacrosse game, and Kota Kodashima, the first Japanese lacrosse player to score in a professional lacrosse game. Lastly, you have the NLA, the very first black-owned professional lacrosse league focused on promoting diversity and inclusion within the sport of lacrosse. The NLA is dedicated to changing how lacrosse looks to the general public. Similar to the PLL, they will be running a tour-based model to provide exposure to the sport throughout the United States. And while single game hasn't even been played yet, I'm confident that the impact of this league will reach far beyond the walls of lacrosse. With all this being said, lacrosse's true potential can't be fulfilled just through the efforts of players and the lacrosse community alone. And while we're heading in the right direction, lacrosse's history, culture, and overall success depends on the growth of our community and in developing a deeper trust within society. That's all I've got for you today. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you so much. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu, and I'll see you later.